the backstory of one Sanvi. Sanvi, could you give me a description of what you're doing, what you look like at this moment? Uh, I've been awake for the past couple of days, just trying to get it back and just trying to get back to my aunt and uncle. Uh, it's been really tough carrying all these construction materials back with me. They sent me out on a selling journey. I needed to go sell all these equipment and uh, it seems like I didn't I didn't get too far. I didn't make the trade. I didn't come back with any money. And I've just kind of been trudging along back home, knowing that my aunt and uncle are going to be really disappointed. And what uh, what species is Sanvi? Sanvi is, I am a river otter. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so you are making your way back to uh, the town of Patchwood, uh, where your aunt and uncle are and where you typically stay. Um, you enter into the domicile, which is uh, sort of this, you know, very moderate looking uh, home in Patchwood. It's in a, a row of other homes close to the water. Um, and as you enter, uh, you see a raggedy old, um, maybe a little bit pudgy. Um, you know, he's, he's kind of let himself go over the years. Um, your uncle Alf uh, is sitting in one of the rockers in the living room. Uh, Mazikeen, your aunt, uh, is in the kitchen. You can hear some, some dishes clattering around over there. Um, and then your your cousins are all, uh, seems like, upstairs somewhere. Uh, but you enter in and Alf greets you. Oh, uh, no, it's on me. Did you make the trade? Uncle Alf, I, I didn't make the trade. So I'm just going to let everything fall to the floor and it's going to make a loud thud. <sighs> That's all right. That's more work for the rest of the family, but nothing we, we can't handle. Uh, appreciate the effort. What, what happened? I'm really sorry, Uncle Alf. Just the route that you told me to go, the bridge, it was completely flooded, flooded by water and I couldn't, I couldn't find another, I couldn't find any way through it. I took two days just trying to find a way around the river and I'm really sorry I really can't do it she's gonna get like super like choked up and just try not to cry she's holding the tears back he looks at you and there is still a bit of disappointment in his eyes but it's predominantly uh, just like this overall sadness um, and he looks at you oh, you know you you are an otter right yeah but it just Uncle, Uncle Alf, I really, I really can't. I just, the water and she's gonna start just kind of like shaking a little bit and she's gonna hug herself really tight. Just kind of staring at the floor and not at uncle, her uncle. He stands up and uh, wraps his arms around you and gives you a hug, uh, pats you on the back and says, it's all right, it's all right. Uh, head upstairs, Miles was looking for you. Okay. Oh, Sami's gonna go upstairs and look for Miles. Uh, yeah, you head up the staircase here, um, and you can see that um, Flora, who is your eldest cousin, and Kelly, who's the middle cousin, are uh, playing some sort of board game in their room. Uh, Miles is running around his room rampantly. Um, he is the youngest and most childlike of the bunch, um, and he is just doing anything active, um, anything that involves him not having to sit down. Um, and as you come up the stairs, he kind of runs into your leg, bumps into you, and stumbles back. Oh, Sammy, you're back. Sammy's gonna kind of like wipe away her tear that was forming and just kind of put on a happy face, a forced smile. And, hey, Miles, how are you? It's so close to see you. She's gonna pick him up and just kind of like toss him into the air and hug him really close. Oh, I'm a good, um, I'm a pretty good, but um, I'm pretty excited that you're home because, uh, because. I, wa I wanted you to play with me. Aw, of course, Miles. I'll go play with you. Why don't you go get Flora and Kelly and uh, meet me in my room? I've got some gifts to show you. Oh, I have gifts? <laughs> and he like runs, uh, you know, flailing uh, to get Kelly and Flora. Um, and all the three of them meet you uh, in your room. What does your room look like, Sandy? My room, it has a... Uh, just a bed, a little chest, uh, which has most of Sambi's belongings that she was able to gather from her previous household with her mother and father, and uh, maybe like a desk. 
and her recorder is going to be on top of her desk next to her journal. Awesome. Um, your three cousins enter the room, um, Kelly and Flora looking uh, as perfect as they always do. Uh, Miles has a little bit of snot running down his nose, uh, his shirt's all raggedy. Uh, but the three of them enter, uh, Miles immediately walks up and sits on your bed, uh, while Kelly and Flora kind of hang on the, the outskirts. Hey, Sandy. Good to see you back. I hear you were less than successful. <clears throat> um, yeah, you're not wrong there. Um, I just, you know, uh, anyway, I, I have a mission for you guys, if you, if you don't mind helping me out. Uh, sure. You know we're always down to help you, Sambi. Okay, so what I need from you guys, Sambi's gonna go to her journal, she's gonna open it up, there's a little key inside, she's gonna pull out the key. Sambi's gonna point to the key and then to the chest. I need you guys to keep your parents busy, maybe just for mm, 30 minutes, and I will wager, I will give you guys this key, and I promise you, all three of you, you can split whatever is inside that chest right over there. Uh, both Flora and Kelly look at each other with, like, incredible excitement, and then back to you. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. That's easy. Uh, and Miles looks up at you. Oh, we, we can do that. What do you need us to distract them for? <laughs> uh, I just want to go for a walk on my own. And I want to come back and I want to show everybody that I can be successful. So I just needed some time to think on my own. And when you see me come back, I'm going to be the most successful otter in that Patchwood has ever seen. Mark my words. I, I don't doubt it, but um, if you go for a walk, could you give me some berries? Yeah, Miles, I'll get you some berries. Okay, perfect. Well, I'll, I'll see you soon. I'll see you soon. Sami's gonna go and give Miles the biggest hug and uh, offer her, open her arms to, to Flora and Kelly so they can come in for a hug if they'd like. They all give you a, a nice big uh, welcoming group hug. Even Flora, who is uh, maybe a bit uppity at times, um, understands that something weird is going on here. Like this is a pretty strange request, like a 30 minute distraction and you get all the stuff in my chest. Um, so I think they're all, they all kind of have an inkling of what's going on um, and they all hug you tightly. Um, and then Flora and Kelly um, exit the room and go downstairs. Um, you can hear them uh, talking to Alf and bringing him into the kitchen and away from the, the door and the exit. Um, Miles just continues to hug your leg until you exit the room. I'm gonna gently peel Miles off of my leg. All right, Miles, this is your time to shine. Don't let me down. Okay. He runs out screaming um, and goes and joins Kelly and Flora. Uh, Sambi, she's gonna go back into her room. She's gonna grab maybe like a change of clothes. Uh, there's a blue cloak that's on her bed. She's gonna grab, wrap around herself. And she's also gonna get her recorder and her journal off the desk. She's gonna, there's a room. I imagine there's a window in her room. She's gonna open that up and uh, use some vines that are growing on the side of the house to climb down and get onto the floor of the ground. <laughs> awesome. Uh, what's going through Sandi's head as her feet hit the floor? Um, and maybe for the first time in a while, you feel a bit free, but how, how is Sandi thinking? What are, you, what are you thinking about? Right now, Sandi's just, She's honestly, she's feeling pretty disappointed in herself. She feels, she feels like she, her aunt and uncle have done so well to take care of her and raise her ever since her parents disappeared. That Sambi just feels like she hasn't been able to pull her weight around. She is always the odd one out. In her, even though that this is her family, she always feels like the odd one out, not only in her family, but in the entire community. And honestly, Sami doesn't like the water. She's so sick of having to wake up and see that stupid river every day. And it's like, it's taunting her. Like, oh, you can't get over your own past. Like, 
I'm going to be here and I'm going to haunt you forever. She just doesn't want to deal with that anymore. She wants to find a place where she belongs and she feels like if she can just let go of at least this part of her life, that she, it'll give make way to something maybe better. But we'll see. Perfect. Tommy's a little uncertain. <laughs> uh, do you just start walking? You just pick a direction and go? Yes. Just a random direction. Awesome. Out, outside of Patchwood. Uh, we we will kind of end the, the scene there um, as the camera pans out and we see a lone otter with a recorder and a journal and a little sack of clothes with a blue cloak pulled tight over her head uh, as she exits the town that she has always known for potentially something greater. And that is the story of Zombie. We open up, um, we see San V, uh, maybe a bit younger San V, standing and um, handing uh, a few different items to her mother and father, um, who are very, not regal looking, but are a bit more well-dressed than some of the otters in town. Um, and they are loading up their boat to go on uh, one of the many excursions that they, they typically do this on, you know, a weekly, if not more than that basis driving goods to various regions over the sea, um, and then returning uh, with as much money as they possibly can. Um, you see your mom looks down at you um, and takes one of the packages from you. We won't be gone too long, dear. Now, do you have things that you can entertain yourself with? Of course, mom. I've got, I've got the beach. I've got all these beautiful seashells that we picked out with each other just the other day. And, but mom, you have to promise me, and she's gonna like grab both her arm, both her hands and like, so I'm be super excited. She's jumping up and down. Like, mom, you have to promise me that you're not gonna open up that package until you get on the boat, after the boat, please. Okay, you promise? I promise. I love you, my dear. Every minute away is a minute of pain, but it makes it that much better when I get to see your face. Oh, mom. And she's gonna jump up and give her a huge hug, wrapping her uh, arms around her mother's neck and just like squeeze her super tight. Okay, okay, that's enough. Your father and I have to go. Uh, your dad looks over to you. On me. Always a pleasure. I'll miss you, Dad. And she's gonna go up and spread her arms up and get on her tippy toes so he can scoop her up into a hug. He picks you up and gives you a, a, a big bear hug. I love you, kiddo. She's gonna whisper in his ear. You make sure that you drive the boat safe, okay? And oh. make sure you go super fast so you can come home as soon as you can. You and I both know your mom's a better driver than I am. Ha ha ha! Well, we should be off. Can't have people waiting. We'll see you when we get back. Love you, my daughter. I love you, Dad. I love you, Mom. She's gonna wave to them. I'm gonna be super brave until you get back. You always are. Uh, and you see them get onto the boat. Um, the uh, rotors start moving um, and the boat starts heading off um, towards the distance. Uh, what does Zombie do? Zombie, she is gonna watch the boat leave and she's gonna race with the boat as long as she can along the beach. And as soon as she gets to a point where she can't follow the boat anymore, she's just gonna kind of stare back and just keep on watching the boat fade into the distance, even though her aunt and uncle are calling her to come back. So she's going to turn around and she's going to kind of kick the sand and think to herself, oh, another week with my three cousins. I hope I can keep them all company, but it's okay. I, I promise, I'm going to promise myself I'm not going to miss my mom and dad too much because it's only a week. They're only going to be gone. I'll be super strong they'll see. Everybody will see. Perfect. Uh, and we, you go uh, in with your, your aunt and uncle and your three cousins. Um, they take you into their home. Um, and we, we fast forward about uh, a week ahead. Um, and Sandi is back out on that same dock awaiting for the uh, arrival of her mother and father. However, Sandi sees a boat uh, that crashes into a large rock. She doesn't know if it's her parents' boat. It's too far in the distance for her to tell, but she waits there for hours and no sign of mom and dad. What's Sanvi thinking? 
Savi is a little shocked right now. She's probably, she's thinking to herself, I don't know what boat that was. Should I tell someone? My parents should be back. They said a week. It's been a week, hasn't it? She's going to start like kind of pacing around a little bit. Is everybody on the boat okay? Do you, I don't know what to do. I don't, I don't know what to do. This is, that can't, it won't be my mom and dad. It won't, I won't. She's just kind of like sit down, lay down on the dock and just pull her knees up to her chest and her eyes are just going to get heavy as she's just, her mind is just like whirling with so many thoughts at once. She doesn't know what to think. And all she knows is that if she, she can just maybe take a nap, everything will be better. Um, you allow yourself to succumb to a little bit of sleep um, and awake back on the dock. Um, your Uncle Alf is actually um, over top of you and he sort of scoops you up. Uh, there's some tears in his eyes um, and he looks at you. Uh, v, I I um, have bad news. Your mom and dad, I, we don't know where they are. Lost. Lost at sea. Sami's gonna kind of rub her eyes a little bit and... What do you mean, Uncle? Lost? They're, they're not lost. They're on their way back. They... Still might be. But... It's been a week. We're supposed to be back in five days. We're not back. So, considering them lost at sea, your aunt and I are gonna get a group together to go look. But... I want you to be aware that you may not find them. Zombie's gonna take a moment and just kind of process what her uncle's telling her, and she's gonna slowly start shaking her no her head no, slowly at first, and then she's gonna get faster and faster, and she's gonna try to push herself off of her uncle. She uh, doesn't want to be in his arms anymore, and just kind of like, no, no, they're gonna be back. They're gonna be back. They promised me. Dad, Dad promised me that he was gonna drive the boat safe, and they're only gonna be gone a week. And they're supposed to already be back here. Look, and she's gonna jump out of his arms and just kind of tug him towards the dock and just point at the dock. Like they're gonna be back. Just, just look over there. Um, your your uncle looks out over the ocean. Um, he understands the the pain that you're going through, um, and he puts a hand on your shoulder and just says, "Then stay with us." At least for the time being. I think it's what your mother and father would want. And if they are out there, this is exactly where they'll come to look for you. Come back with myself and your Aunt Mazakine, and maybe our, maybe your cousins will be a, a, a positive influence for the next few weeks. Um, and he doesn't uh, doesn't pick you up and doesn't try to lead you back into the house. He just turns back around um, and says, whenever you're ready, and walks back into uh, the domicile of uh, Aunt Mazikeen and Uncle Alf, um, leaving Sanvi staring out into the distance on the docks. Sanvi is going to watch her uncle walk away, and the entire time she's just kind of shaking. Uh, it's not cold outside, but she just can't help but just shake. She's just thinking to herself, this this can't be happening, this can't be happening. She's gonna look at her uncle and then look at the dock and look back at her uncle again. And then one last look at the dock until she just makes a run for it. She's gonna run to the dock. She's gonna jump and dive into the sea. But as soon as the water hits her fur and she feels the familiarity of the coldness of the sea, something just isn't right. It's not clicking. She feels uh, almost like an anxiety attack. She feels like she's hyperventilating. She can't, she can't hold her breath underwater. She's just freaking out. It feels like she just doesn't know how to swim anymore. Like the sea just like took everything away from her. And as you as you sort of enter the water in that moment, uh, there's like a ringing in your head, and you hear the crashing of that boat that you saw earlier in the day. And as soon as your face hits that water, you hear that sound, that image flashes back and almost like PTSD clicks in, in like one second flat 
um, and you feel all of these different emotions. Um, you feel yourself unable to really be able to be a strong swimmer, even given that you're an otter. Savi's gonna try to break the water. She'll break the water and just kind of like splash around, trying to make as much noise as she can and just gasping for air, trying to get some sort of like calmness about her so she's not in a bad situation, but she knows she is in a bad situation. And as she's splashing around, she's going to be thinking to herself the thoughts of regret. Zombie thinks to herself, what if I just went to go tell someone whenever that boat crashed? Would anyone believe me? That Would everybody on that boat be okay? Was my mom and dad on that boat? Would everyone just be okay if I just said something? And as you think these things, you feel um, again, the, the presence of another otter um, scooping you up um, and sort of taking you and dragging you into uh, a nearby sanded beachy area just outside of the dock area. Um, and when you look up, you recognize the familiar face of the guard captain of Patchwood, uh, Mr. Otto. Sunday, you all right? Somebody's gonna <clears throat> cough a little bit. <coughs> Yeah. Yes, Captain. I, I think I'm all right. Just kind of thank you. She's going to be like kind of rubbing at her eyes, rubbing all the water off her fur. She just doesn't want to feel the coldness, the yuckiness of the water. Things are going to be okay. All right. She's going to look up at him and just like with the most like distraught kind of face and like huge tears bubbling in her eyes. Like, how can you say that? How can you say that? It's uh, really the only thing I can say. I am a, a captain. I'm a, I'm a soldier. I'm not much one for the talking, but I have experienced loss in my life. The only thing that you can do is wait. Have other people say it's going to be fine and get mad at them. I've been there. And you're young. Now. You can stay with your aunt, your uncle, but if you need anything, you reach out to me. I like to be a familiar face for everybody here in Patchwood. One of the only places in the woodland that isn't driven by the war. Come find me if you need something. And he uh, extends another hand um, for, for you to shake. Sami's gonna go and take his hand and thank you, Captain. She's gonna pause for a minute, kind of like glance back at the water and then glance back at him. She's like, say, Captain, do you think, do you think you've ever heard of an otter that can't swim? No, I don't think that I have, but anything is possible here in the woodland. And if you can't swim, and you are an otter, not saying that you can't, but if you knew one that couldn't swim, I don't know that I'd go around telling people that. Does that make sense? She'll nod her head, just kind of look down at the ground. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you, Cap. Otters are a proud folk, and they mostly proudful about the way that they can swim, the way that they can deliver goods over water. But you'll be a different, enterprising otter. Now, I've got to go fulfill my duties to the city. But please, come and find me anytime you're in trouble. And if the going gets tough and I'm not around, you write your thoughts in that journal of yours, and then you come find me. And we'll talk them through. Sound good? Yeah, it sounds good. Everyone needs an outlet. And he uh, pats you on the head. Um, he hands you um, like this little, like, uh, it's like a pirate's hat, right? But it's, it's super, super fake for children. Um, he must just have a ton of them on him. Um, hands you one of those um, and then starts to, to turn back around and walk um, into the city of Patchwork. Zombie is going to stare at him for a little bit as he walks back and uh, take the captain's hat. She's going to turn and look at the sea and... (sighs) 
she's not feeling too good about herself right now. That entire experience with the water just kind of really shook her up. She doesn't, there's no need to want to go into the water. She's gonna crumple up the captain's hat and just kind of toss it to her side and shake her head and kind of give her head a few bumps. Okay, zombie, you promised mom and dad that you're gonna be strong while they're gone and until they're found, it's up to me to be strong. She's gonna turn her back and start walking to her aunt and uncle's house and just kind of like look over at her shoulder at the water and just get a good bunch of goosebumps. Her hair stands on its end. Get a shiver. Ugh. But as long as mom and dad are lost, I'm sure our good captain will be able to find them and I won't have to go back in there. And then she's going to start walking to her aunt and uncle's house.